uh, Brother Cambone. Where you going, brother? Sit down, man. Where you going? I got, I got we need you. Because, see, I do uh, low-power radio. Oh, that's right. That's right. And he can't tell you where he's going, right. too. <laughs> I've been on that radio thing. Um, brother, come on up. I want to say a couple of things, and I really don't want you all to miss me uh, before we get ready to go. Uh, my wife was here, and uh, she was the president of the Association of Black Psychologists uh, a couple of years ago, and she was responsible for taking about 500 people, including about 300 black psychologists, to Ghana, West Africa, for their national conference. The reason I point that out is because I want to say a couple of things, and I'm going to go out of bounds what I, with what I have to say relative to what we've been talking about. Um, first of all, I, I grew up in Brooklyn. And uh, I saw, uh, looking back on my life, I saw about 30 of my friends die, you know, getting shot, overdosing on drugs, any number of things that took them off the planet, you know, beautiful brothers. So I, as I started to become more conscious, I looked around, I started asking this very important question. I think the most important question that I ask myself and that you can ask yourself is why. And I wanted to find out what was going on. So I began to change. I began to examine everything. I don't like to use the word critically, but I started to really check things out. So I went through a very, very serious change. I mean, serious change. And what my wife and I did, we uh, decided that we were going to drop out from this system. We delivered our two of our three children at home using midwives. She didn't take any medication. We didn't go to a doctor. She talked me into doing that, but it was a beautiful experience for me to be there to help deliver our children. Uh, they were born, by the way, two years apart on the same day, and our oldest daughter helped us deliver our children. We also changed our diets. We saw the hospital system was killing our people, so we changed our diets. Uh, we have been vegan for about 30 years. That means no meat, no meat at all in any form, no dairy products, no sugar, no white flour, the same thing that Dr. Whitaker talked about. Because we understood that we were in a war, and I want to emphasize that to you. We are in a war. We left New York and went to North Carolina, and we, and really it's on her again, we decided that we were not going to go in debt because the, the new form of slavery was economic slavery. Well, we got some land, we were very fortunate, and we built our own house. We built a log house. It took us 16 months. We worked night and day every day for the 16 months. And she was out there with a chainsaw in the cold and the rain, and we worked and we built the house so we would not have to give white people any money. I taught on the college level for a number of years at a so-called black college, and I'm down against black colleges. I'm going to tell you straight up, because some of the madness that's going on in these schools. But what I want to say is that there are two things going on on the planet now. One is that when white people came to us and said, we're going to free you, we're going to emancipate you from the plantation, what they did was extended the boundaries of the plantation and made it an international plantation. Made us think that we were free. In addition to that, they made every white, per every white person on earth a plantation master or owner. So there are two things in operation. We are in an international prison. It's not just in America, but everywhere we go, our people are dying. So the things that are in operation on this planet is that white people want to kill us. I want you to understand that. They want to kill you. And it has nothing to do with what the kind of degree you have, what kind of car you have, what kind of title you have, what fraternity you belong to, what religion you belong to. They want to kill you because that is part of their plan. There are any number of reasons why they want to do that. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out why they want to kill us. But I know that's what they want to do. And they want to do it in many different ways. Psychological, economic, cultural, spiritual, 
social and biological, chemical, electromagnetic. They want to kill you. But they also want to make, pro make money in the process of your death. Now, I saw a brother when I was coming, and he was smoking a cigarette. So now he's going to kill himself, but they're going to make money off of his death process. The other thing is that they want us to, if they don't kill us, like they tried to kill the brother by beating him up in New Orleans, if they don't kill us that way, or shooting like they killed the brother in Cincinnati, or like they killed Malice Green in Detroit, or like they killed Greenwich up in Pittsburgh, if they don't come out right and kill us straight, they want to get us to kill ourselves. Now, these are the only two operations on the planet. The other thing is that there's only one nigger on the planet. I never use that word. This is the first time I've used it. I don't even think that word. But there's only one nigger on the planet. And the nigger that's on the planet is the one that is destroying the water, the one that's polluting the air, the one that is exploiting people and resources, and the only nigger on the planet is the white man and the white woman. And then our people are not niggers, we are imitation niggers. Now, what we have to do is we have to devise a system or a plan for ourselves. And I said earlier that each one of you is a system. And Everything that you do, every thought that you think, either you are supporting white world terror domination by your actions, what you buy, what you wear, where you go, what you eat, how you use your time. You are either supporting the white people in their process of death or you're for African liberation. It's one or the other. And if we don't use our time wisely, then we are engaging in a form of subtle suicide. Because as I said earlier, their system is still going on. They still have these images on TV that are going on. They're still warehousing our children in the special ed, giving them Ritalin. There are no jobs. We fill in the hospitals. So their system is not stopping. And then finally, I want to say that we need one idea. And we're not thinking about a solution to the problem. We're dealing with all these other things, but these are diversions from the solution to the problem. And we have to start to think about a solution to the problem so that these young brothers and sisters who are here now, who are 15, 16, and 17, are not here 25 years later talking about these same problems. Now, how do I know that the white people know that we are going to come up with a solution to the problem? I know it because they have retina scans, they have what they call racial profiling, DNA banks, and they're monitoring our people to try to prevent the one person from coming up with the one idea. And the one idea is how we are going to exterminate white people, because that, in my estimation, is the only conclusion I have come to. We have to exterminate white people off of the face of the planet to solve this problem. Now, I don't care whether you clap or not, but I'm saying to you that we need to solve this problem because they are going to kill us. And I will leave on that. So we have to just set up our own system and stop playing and get very serious and not be diverted from coming up with a solution to the problem. And the problem on the planet is white people. Uh, be hard to follow that one. You can get as black as you want. I don't know if you can get that. I, uh, 